You're the top You're the Louvre Museum You're a melody from a symphony by Strauss You're an ascot bonnet, a Shakespeare sonnet You're Mickey Mouse You're the Nile You're the Tower of Pisa You're the smile on the Mona Lisa I'm a worthless check, a total wreck, a flop But if, baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top Best of luck, love. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. Everything's perfectly all right. Well, Ralph, it's all over. I would have thought it was just beginning, Phyllis. I'm not sure you should call me Phyllis, should you? Well, it's your name, isn't it? I have no intention of calling your husband Mr. Bennett, I can assure you of that. Be careful. He's very fond of Pamela, and so am I. Be nice to her, won't you? Whatever gives you the idea, I won't be. Oh, quite a few things. Ah, they are ghosts. Oh, Ralph, please. As I was saying, it will have to be Harold and Ralph from now on, won't it? Indeed it will not. In my office, I'm Mr. Bennett, everybody on my staff, and that includes you. Well, on parade, off parade, as it were, just like the army, eh? Exactly. If you excuse me, I've just got to see the culinary arrangements. Ralph. Well, if he'd given me half a chance, I was going to thank him for buying Pamela the house. Oh, the least we could do. Can't have our daughter starting married life in some scruffy little combined room, can we? Just thank your lucky stars, Phyllis. You never had to do that. I'm sorry, Ralph. I didn't mean it. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, don't be so thin-skinned. So boring. Stimson was here, outside the church. He wasn't. Awful old thing. What? I think he's quite mad. Ralph, that awful, clumsy Bruce woman. Was she anything to you? Honestly. Come along, Ralph. It's about time you paid some attention to your wife. <laughs> Partnership? After two months? I thought you wanted Pamela to have a decent standard of living. I do, but that doesn't include handing over the running of my business to a petty blackmailer. Oh, those are harsh words, Harold. They're truthful words. And don't call me Harold! <laughs> then stop talking to me as if I'm some bloody grease monkey out of the workshop. <laughs> I'd sooner make one of them a partner. And I say that with all sincerity. So you don't care what happens to your daughter, then? I look after Pamela. Don't you worry about oh, that. Oh, but I do worry, Harold. Then don't. You've got a good home, an adequate salary, which is a great deal more than you're worth. So let that suffice for the time being. I could, if I was upset enough by your attitude. My dear Harold, show your dear wife certain photographs and hotel bills. Then do it. I care for my daughter, of course. Maybe she's in this marriage partly because of me. So do it. And be damned to you. All I was asking... No partnership! Never! And I think... that when my daughter's child has a name, she'll be a damn sight better off without you. So any time you want to hand in your notice, it'll be most sympathetically received. And, Gorse, as far as I'm concerned, 
You are simply a poor relation. What do you call this? Well, it was a shepherd's pie. But you are an hour and a half later than you said you'd be, darling. Perhaps if Take I it know, away and bring me some bread and cheese or something. There's no whiskey left, I don't suppose. You, you drank the last of it yesterday, darling. Well, if you knew that, why didn't you buy some more? A gentleman only drinks beer when he's thirsty. Darling, I should say you'd had enough to drink already. I'll be the sole judge of that, darling. Oh, Ralph, eat something. No appetite, my love. I lost it somewhere down at Bloody Bennett's Motors when your old fool of a father talked to me as if I were a greased monkey. Please, don't talk about him like that. He's helped us. Well, he did pay all your creditors. He means well, really. No, he doesn't. Darling, I know I got pregnant. My fault. But Daddy gave us this house and everything in it, the furniture, everything. We have to be grateful. Oh, no, we don't have to be grateful. You have to be grateful. He did it all for you. What's he ever done for me? Tell me that. So I just said, darling, he gave us this house. No, darling, he gave you the house. Don't see the difference? Well, I do. A man likes to feel master in his own house. And I don't feel like that. I feel like a lodger. Or as your dear daddy so charmingly put it, a poor relation. Well, I'm sure daddy never said that. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He did ask him. I don't know what you want. I do everything I can for you. Considering this house is yours. It's yeah. ours, darling. It's in your name. That's only daddy being... That's daddy being himself. A man should own his own house. Otherwise he gets no respect from anyone. I... I don't know if daddy would agree to my... Changing the house into your name. Well, then don't. Or do and don't tell him. What's it got to do with him? It's your house. Yes, but he gave it to me. Oh, well, don't bother. The hell with it. Darling, you know what Daddy's thinking? No, I don't know what Daddy's thinking. Well, he's thinking that... It's him I'm talking about, not me. But he's thinking that since you got into such trouble with people, owing them all that money and everything, and not paying them back, all those dud checks and everything. Well, you have to see it from his point of view. He wonders if you've turned over a new leaf. Well, you do see that, don't you, Ralphie? Thank you. What? I can ask you just how much you love me. Oh, but I do. Two things. One, never call me Ralphie again. I'm sorry, darling, I didn't know you didn't like it. And if you ever talk to me like that, ever again, I'll probably kill you.